Thanks for joining us for National Focus. I'm Shakira Peer. Coming up, Baroness Verma visit Dominica, a draft policy to be finalized on nutrition concerns in schools, and ODM says it's prepared for 2016 hurricane season. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. A picture is worth a thousand words. Got it? Taking care of us can be so easy. Take good care of the children. The advancement of Dominica's geothermal project took center stage as United Kingdom's parliamentary under Secretary of State for International Development, Baroness Sandy Verma, paid an official visit to Dominica between Monday and Wednesday this week. The Baroness made a courtesy visit to His Excellency the President Charles Savre on Tuesday. The Baroness also paid a courtesy call on Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt. Baroness Verma expressed to the Dominica leader the UK government's keen interest in the long-term economic development of the island. She informed Honorable Skerritt that more funds were available for the advancement of the geothermal project. You obviously have a vision for your country. Um, and along with that vision, we also have a vision for how we can, uh, can support your growth agenda. So, with the President, we were just talking about the geothermal um, plant. And I think my, my urge to you would be that there is funds available. Um, I think you were saying around about $20 million. Um, looking at that, and looking at how that with other consort parts of consortia to come together, the geothermal plant shouldn't be left to be on the back burner for a long time. You've already done the mapping exercise, right. I think, and the drilling. So I, my urge would be, let's get on with it. Right. Let's uh, let's get a move on because it's something that will demonstrate one um, the seriousness of our relationship to get the economic growth story going. But also, it allows investors to see the seriousness um, because they'll have a competitive edge with competitive energy pricing. Prime Minister Skerritt has assured that the project is too important to be delayed and government has plans to set up a small plant for local consumption. He assured government's commitment to follow through on acquiring the necessary funding to complete the project. Honorable Dr. Skerritt also thanked the Bridget government for its assistance, particularly in the area of security. With the assistance we received from the British government, that has enhanced the mobility um, in, in so far as security is concerned tenfold. And while we welcome the uh, long spans in terms of infrastructural development, mm. we would urge the British government to, to keep this arrangement in place uh, as long as possible. Um, it, it, is, it has certainly helped um, uh, tremendously and we're very grateful for this. Uh. The Baroness and her team also visited the Dominica State College where she interacted with President Dr. Donald Peters and the directors of programs jointly funded by the UK and Canada. This includes ongoing programs in bartending and housekeeping. She shared her plans for even further development in the area of youth skills training. I was really impressed with some of the young people I met today and the great thing about young people is that they're very honest um, they, they were very pleased with being part of the, um, the youth program we're very pleased that we'll be funding a program next year of 10 million pounds um, more so um, to ensure that more dis uh, disadvantaged young people can enroll on but also looking at disability how we can be and build an inclusive society because it's really important that we don't leave anyone behind and I know that um, the Prime Minister and the President are very much aligned to ensuring that young people the future of Dominica um, have the right skills the final leg of the visit was a tour of the Lubia to Bagatelle Road under the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Partnership Fund, UKCF Fund, plans are on stream to rehabilitate this road, which was severely compromised by Tropical Storm Erica. It must have been devastating for the people of Dominica. The Hurricane Erica obviously disrupted a lot of lives. Um, and so we need to make sure that this project gets off the ground um, as soon as possible so that we get people coming back into normality of their lives but also make it so it's robust 
um, and can withstand the pressures of climate change and, and weather, weathers like Hurricane Erica. About 25 million pounds is available for this project. The Baroness left the state on Wednesday. The Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development are collaborating to address three major health concerns to improve the school nutrition policy for Dominica. The multi-sectorial consultation on the draft school nutrition policy will last for three days. The three major public health concerns and related threats to children and adolescents are overweight and obesity, iron deficiency and dental caries. The goal of the policy is to provide a school environment that enhances learning and the development of healthy, lifelong eating and activities. Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, Marini Steed, gave an overview of the policy. The policy talks about the foods that the children are going to eat, the foods that are going to be sold at the school, the foods that are going to be brought to the schools, and the type of physical activities that our children are engaged in and how all of those are going to impact on their life. The policy will focus on five important areas and Audrey did mention some of them. The school curriculum, food service environment, the school health and nutrition services, parent and community involvement, policy implementation and monitoring. Work on the draft policy began in 2012 with support from Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and the Caribbean Food and Nutrition Institute, CFNI, as well as senior education officers. In 2014, the draft policy was circulated to all principals in all education districts during nine cluster meetings. 117 participants attended the meeting who gave feedback on the draft policy. The Ministry of Health met with school cooks in March and April of 2016. We wanted to find out what was happening at the schools. Re the snacks, the types of foods that were being prepared there, and also um, the nutrition education. What was going on in the school curriculum? And therefore, we conducted this survey in March, of April, March and April of 2014. We talked about the recipes, we talked about some of the issues that they have and to find ways to solve those. We looked at um, recipe development and sampling because we need, this is a stage that we have to get to. Right now we have our recipes in the schools, we do not have standards, we do not um, know how much each child should be eating because when you go to the schools you see different bowls and plates and so on and are the children getting the required amount? So we need to, to really develop the recipes so that we can also control our purchasing, etc. Also, in 2016, meetings were held with education and health officials who added their recommendations to the existing draft. The current draft policy includes recommendations made during the series of meetings from 2014 to 2016. Teed stated that on Thursday, the participants of the consultation will develop the operation manual for the school feeding program. You need standards, you need to know um, what are the, the, the methods by which you purchase food, or you store food, or you handle food, and you talk about food safety. So all of these issues are going to come up in the operation manual, and therefore tomorrow we have in this meeting for some of our teachers who so will look at the manual and um, kind of tailor it to meet our needs in Dominica. Also, on Friday, we're going to have the standardization of recipes. We're going to continue that process and look at the methodologies. Dr. Audrey will also be leading us in both of these um, workshops. Funding for the policy and its development is coming from the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, and the Ministries of Health and Education. The Office of Disaster Management is confident that for this hurricane season, everything is under control in terms of disaster preparedness. June 1st marked the official start of the 2016 hurricane season. The 2016 hurricane season is expected to be near to normal with no landfall predictions. GIS News had the opportunity to speak with disaster risk management specialist Cecil Schillingford on Wednesday. 
In terms of the state of readiness of the Office of Disaster Management, the um, office is as ready as it has always been every year. Um, there are certain things that need to be done and uh, the office, office is always proactive uh, well before the hurricane season in terms of putting shelters in place in conjunction with the local government authorities and um, other agencies. We also are proactive in terms of getting our subcommittees, our various organs in place and meeting and discussing and putting plans, uh, their plans together, etc. Um, this year was uh, uh, slightly different in that um, I came in to do um, some work for the disaster office and one of the things I undertook was uh, a sort of a, a meeting with all the subcommittees because during the Erica um, experience we got the sense that some of the people they were new and they were not very sure of what their roles and their responsibilities were. Shillingford said a meeting with all subcommittees was held to ensure that the appropriate preparations for this hurricane season have been made. I think it was uh, a good thing that we did that went through with every committee and uh, had some very fruitful discussions and um, coming out of that some recommendations were made and that um, resulted in a very successful NEPO meeting last week where we had uh, all of NEPO um, at a planning meeting ahead of the hurricane season and all these committees re um, reported and what we are doing now is looking at the various reports and uh, areas where there are recommendations to see how we can facilitate these recommendations ahead of the, um, the season. He noted that Tropical Storm Erica has given much more insight on disaster preparedness. One thing is we, we had quite um, a few lessons learned from Erica and uh, of course God forbid something hap like that happens again I uh, would like to be able to deal with it in a more organized way than it was done. would want to have an early alert. We would want um, to activate our emergency operation center uh, early o'clock. We want to have trained the people in the emergency operation center. And we want all the organs of NEPO to function as they're supposed to function as per the national plan. There's a national plan and I would like to call on the members of NEPO and persons involved in NEPO to look at their national plans and, and see what, what are their responsibilities and carry out their responsibilities. Meantime, the Meteorological Office works collaboratively with the ODM to safeguard the public for this hurricane season. An exhibition took place at the government headquarters on Wednesday. Meteorologist Marshall Alexander gives some details about the exhibition. The um, displaying um, some of the items that would be necessary or used during the hurricane season and even after the hurricane season. Some of the food items you might use and some of the, or will use, and some of the, um, the instruments or equipment you will need. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. I had a bleeding disorder that I did not know about and they had to be transfusing me continuously. I got 56 units. Being there at the blood bank, I was like, yo, I'm actually saving someone's life. You never know when you can go. Give blood. I have done it, and believe it or not, it don't hurt. I won't be scared. I'll give. <laughs> you know you're going to give blood. I'll make sure she does. Sit down at the blood bank in a comfortable environment for 45 minutes. Helping people. You are stimulating your body to make brand new cells. You get free cookies, you get juice. Glad to know your blood group feels good. I felt as a better person. It's a good thing to be alive and I can thank God that I'm there and I'm enjoying life. Welcome back. A month of activities for Tourism Awareness Month in May came to a close on Tuesday at the government headquarters with an open day. This year's Tourism Awareness Month included activities such as the official opening ceremony, Tourism Youth Congress, Tourism Essay Contest, and Tourism Presentations to Primary and Secondary Schools. GIS's Lurian Graham Carter spoke with participants of the Open Day at the Government Headquarters. 
Today marks the final day of Tourism Awareness Month and I'm joined by Samantha who's going to tell us what are the activities going on at the government headquarters today. Samantha, talk to us about that. Well, Lorian, you're quite right. This is the Tourism Awareness Month activities in May and as the end of the May, we, we kind of closing off with the Tourism Awareness uh, Month Tourism Open Day event. So at this event, we actually have a number of our stakeholders, a number of our partners who are here showcasing their products, their services. Um, some of them have specials on events. We have Express Dizil here. So it's an amazing event where um, the general public can actually dialogue and interact with persons working in the sector to understand exactly what do they do, what are you about. Um, we have sector representatives from the Health and Wellness Association. We have our tour operator, Richard Stores, along with Express Diesel. We have um, participants from the Dominican Hotel and Tourism Association, from the Community Tourism Association group. And we have a, a wide variety of our uh, craft personnel from the Dominican Man um, Craft Producers Association, along with the Kalinago Bar and Ote. We have drummers. Um, it's quite an exciting event. We actually have um, persons from the Lama. Um, also representing the Water Sports Association. So they're doing demonstrations. Uh, we actually have schools coming in doing understanding. Okay, how do we put on our wetsuit? What, 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 is, what, what is it to actually go in the sea and experience our diet? So it's product. a very interactive, very interactive activity. activity. We're going to go ahead and speak to some of the participants of um, today's activities. What are you um, offering today at your table? Okay, at my table I am offering you know, demonstrations in um, massage, especially the head massage, shoulder massage, hand massage, because a lot of people suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, because you know, they do a lot of computer, they do a lot on their phones, so I am doing this for them. Tell us Dr. John, how does this tie into tourism? Wow, this is a good question because you see, when the tourists come to Dominica, they, they more and more, they do not just want to come and see what we have, they want to come and feel good because we have an abundance of water, waterfalls, rivers, you know, lush greenery and stuff like that, um, all our volcanic um, mud and stuff like that. And our people, our people are so skilled in massage, in, you know, just the traditional um, healing system that we have. We make um, leather products from belts to cases, um, copper and recycled jewelry and also soya candles. The soya candles, they are especially soya because of the, the, to help the environment and because they are vegetable based, they are much more healthy for, for inhaling and everything. Also, the soya candles is free from carcinogen. Carcinogen is cancer-causing agents, unlike the paraffin candles that we know already that um, is a petroleum-based product. These were just some of the products being offered for the final day of Tourism Awareness Month. I am Lorian Graham Carter, reporting from the government headquarters for GIS News. And that's the English News. McPherson St. Louis is up next with Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à cette nouvelle en Creole, non moins c'est McPherson Senos. Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique Chen a grand cérémonie pour commissionner le Centre of Excellence en State College Dominique. Cérémonie qui prend place vendredi à 11h bon matin. Les officiers gouvernement a parmi le Premier ministre, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, et le ministre Telecoms, Honorable Kelvin Darrow, qui a délivré l'adresse en cérémonie. Ministre Telecoms Honorable Kelva Adaro Kapale Epeno. Et puis vendredi qui a fini, nous avons allé ni en cérémonie pour ouvrir ça nous qui est Centre pour Excellence Hall ICT. Ça c'est une initiative gouvernement Dominique et puis gouvernement India ils ont venu ensemble pour faire. Et puis Centre là il 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 hold place um, Dominica State College of a Campus. Et puis moi dit toutes ces jeunes monde qui um, ni intrigue hot ICT pour yo faire quoi available pour training hot center ça là et puis m'a dit merci pour gouvernement india puis le gouvernement india yo venir en bord yo yo dit nous yo ka faire ça ba nous et puis ça nous nous fait nous té ni pour taper en place nous ni pour taper um, internet line là et tout bagage ça là et puis gouvernement india yo ba nous hot um, equipment là hardware et puis software You provide um, Sanokaki 
uh, directeur pour centre là et puis des 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 de, de teachers et puis tout bagaille ça là selon honorable daru gouvernement dominic bien parwe pour augmenter ICT en pays et puis actuellement nous parwe et puis vendredi qui va venir nous va ouvrir centre là et puis les centre là ouvert moi les de tout le monde qui a, qui ni en interest qui les fait un programme un cours un training hot ICT pour aller hot centre là puis tu nous nous va faire faire dominic lever hot ICT et puis dominic ni pour bi ni dominic ni pour pour faire ça nous va faire pour pour mener dominic uh, plus haut et puis c'est un so bel programme et puis moi les de merci pour pour mes ministres scarret puis tu sais pour mes ministres scarret là qui qui fait ça qui en en relationship qui 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 fait nous taper bag bagay ça là et puis actuellement nous nous parler et puis moi les de toutes ces jeunes monde toutes ces monde qui qui ont en interest hot ICT pour venir voir ça nous faire et pour pour yo participer hot programs là et puis yo ka taper hot certificate là yo fini et puis et, et puis ça fait taper travail si on est pour venir hot en hot en small business c'est pour aller hot private sector là tous les bagages ça là nous ka faire hot center excellence la nouvelle Dominique ensemble et puis plaisir pays qui a commencé à observer saison cyclone hot les 1er juin ça c'est jeudi hein pour novembre le 30 l'office des as qui a fait parole qui y en toute confiance que toute bagaille en bas contrôle qui a concerné population l'office météo qui travaille en collaboration et puis l'office des as pour aider ce public là contre saison cyclone là il y a une exhibition chain jeudi hein en l'occasion gouvernement en rose on a plaisir bagaille pour préparation saison été assez saine monsieur marshal alexander c'est officier météo de la dominique nous ici à l'office du gouvernement, nous avons fait une exhibition avec ODM, ça veut dire avec ODM. Et puis ça nous a montré que nous avons besoin, ça a aussi posé ni pour préparer quoi pour ces saison cycle. Là. Nous avons besoin de pour manger, de si poser ni pour manger, ça c'est bah, qui n'a pas besoin d'aller à, 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 à la fridge Ça c'est non perishable um, items. Et puis il y a des lignes, des lampes, des lampes, des lampes batri bay comme ça moun si posé besoin pour saison cyclon là so c'est ça nous ka fait ici et puis nous ka di moun ki sa nou am ka espérer pour saison cyclon là et saison cyclon ka ka gade ki e ki en saison ki nien normal et puis ka gade ki gade ki e ki plus haut ki saison ki passé mais c'est madame ça c'est tout pour nouvelle créole pour à présent non moi c'est Mac Fosse Saint Louis au revoir Here are a few unusual tips in observance of Caribbean Nutrition Day. Don't fear coffee. Coffee is high in antioxidants. Don't overcook or burn your meat. This can lead to the formation of harmful compounds that raise the risk of cancer. Don't fear saturated fats. And finally, don't go on a diet. Try adopting a healthier lifestyle. Focus on nourishing your body instead of depriving it. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is now available also on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I'm Shakira Peer. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.